Hey there, it's Ella from the Spine Team. In today's video, we are going to focus on 3D icons. This is a beginner-friendly tutorial where we're going to take a look at the pen tool, how to take SVGs and make them 3D, and how we can make this messenger icon from start to finish. All right, without further ado, let's get started. There are several ways you can transform a 2D icon, logo, or shape into 3D using Spline. If you click the plus icon here in the top toolbar, you will see the full list of available 3D objects. There, you can discover cubes, spheres, and other basic elements that are perfect for design and creating your own icon. You can also design using flat 2D shapes and easily transform them into 3D just like you might in other 2D design tools that you're already familiar with. For example, you can import a sketch and use that as reference. Then you can go here to the top toolbar and use a 2D shape to make your design. You can find the shapes like the rectangle, ellipse, triangle, pentagon, and a star. When you draw a shape, you can also double click to edit. You can change the position of the nodes, select the pen tool to add new nodes to the shape, and use the bend tool to form and curve your shape. Basically, similar to a vector design software, but in the 3D space. Then you can select your shapes and in the right panel, you can increase the level of extrusion to give your design a more three-dimensional look. You can manipulate other options like the size, subdivision, corner, bevel, and bevel sides. And here's a tool that might look familiar to you. This is the pen tool. You can use it to create custom shapes by drawing lines, curves, and freeform designs, which then you can easily convert to 3D objects. With vectors, you have a complete control over your icon design. And once you have created your shape, you can easily edit by double clicking on it. To exit this vector editing mode, simply double click anywhere on the viewport or press the escape key. It's a fantastic option for crafting logos, simple icons, and even more intricate designs. And here's another thing you can try. So you can take a star shape from the menu or any shape or create something with the pen tool and make it 3D. Then what you can do is convert it to a path. This is going to create a 3D path with the vector points that you have. And you can edit this by adjusting the size of the path, the shape of the path, and of course, the vector points. So you can use the bend tool to make this more of an organic flower shape. Another great tip is to enable snapping. To do this, deselect everything and go over to the global settings and click on object next to snapping. This way, Spline will help you align your objects with more ease. Let's say you already have a logo design and you have it as an SVG. Let's learn how to import SVGs into Spline. So the first way you can do this is by hitting Command O to open and import an SVG, or you can go to the import button here in the bottom corner. Next, let's click on the vector or SVG option and choose your logo. So here's the logo that I'm going to be using for the example. One thing to keep in mind when using SVGs is you want to make sure you flatten your SVG and you have no overlapping points to ensure an easy transition into the 3D space. And when importing your SVG into Spline, your pivot point might be in an odd position. So you might want to adjust this just to make it easier to work with the group. All you need to do is hit option command while selecting the group. And then you'll see a box appear around your pivot point and this means you can now move your pivot point to wherever you want it around your object. So I'm going to move it into the center of my icon just so it's a bit easier to work with. Nice! Now it's easier to move it around in the 3D space. Now what we can do is add some extrusion to this icon to really make it 3D. So I'll add about 6 or 7 on the extrusion here. And quickly, I have a material already prepared, this shiny purple material. And voila, we have a 3D version of this SVG icon. All right, let's finish off this tutorial by creating an icon together. Let's create this text or messenger icon that we saw at the beginning. 
So to start, let's grab a shape from the top toolbar. You can either grab the ellipses from the drop down menu here or just from the toolbar here. Let's drag and drop our ellipses like this. I'm just going to eyeball the shape. That's looking pretty good. And then what I wanna do is right click and hit reset position. This just ensures that this is in the center of my scene. Now let's double click to edit and let's add two points using the pen tool. And then let's add a point right in the middle. This is going to create that little stem at the bottom of our messenger icon. Now let's drag the point in the middle. I'm going to zoom in a bit here. Okay, there we can see a lot better. So let's drag this point in the middle down, trying to keep it as centered as possible. Now I'm going to begin to shape this using the handles to create a little bit more of a curve. And zooming out, it's looking pretty good, but I actually want to move this over a bit so I can select all three of the points by dragging. And now we can adjust the rest of the shape. Looking pretty good. I think these points need a little more adjusting. And now looking at the shape here of the stem of our messenger icon, I feel like it needs a bit more shaping. So another thing that we can do is add another point so we can round out this side of the stem. And let's use this handle here to create more of a curve on the other side. I'm going to adjust a bit more using the handles here. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. I'm happy with this shape. And now let's make it 3D. For the extrusion, I'm going to extrude this to about 24. And then let's round out the edges here by adding some bevel. So I'm going to add about four on the bevel and maybe two, no, three on the bevel sides. So now it's more rounded and it's looking a lot smoother. But I think we can smooth this out even more, so let's add some subdivision. I'm going to add a subdivision of 40, so as you can see, it's buttery smooth. But if you remove the subdivision, just to show you, you can see that it starts to get really edgy, which could be a look that you're going for, but for this, I really like this smooth and buttery look, so let's leave that at 40. Now, I'm happy with this shape, let's hit Command D to duplicate it. And then selecting the copy, I'm going to right click and select flip X so it flips on the X axis. And now let's move these guys apart. Okay, looking pretty good. I think it's time for materials. So let's hide the first one here and we'll start with the blue icon first. So to create this blue material, it is very simple. Let's go to the material panel and open up the color option. And I'm going to change this to the blue. I have the exact code for the color I'm using here, so feel free to copy that if you'd like. Now in lighting, I'm going to turn this up to 80 and making sure it's on overlay. All right, that's looking pretty good. So that one was very simple to make. So let's turn on our other icon here and we are going to use a glass material layer to make that frosted glass look. So add a layer and let's select glass. Let's drag that down to the bottom here and we can get rid of the color layer. We no longer need that. Now let's make some adjustments to the blur. I'm going to be using a value of 145 for the blur. For thickness, I'm using a value of 175. And then here I set the refraction to 1.1. I'm going to move lighting underneath the glass layer just because I feel like I don't really need it. You could also just turn it off as well. Now let's add our next material layer. This is the Fresnel layer. The Fresnel layer is adding a nice shine to the side of our icon, as you can see here. 
goes hand in hand with the glass layer. Now let's change the color here to more of a blue color so it's a little more subtle. Nice. Then for the bias, I'm going to turn this up just a little bit to 0 0.15. And that's the only thing I'm going to be changing in the Fresnel settings. But feel free to explore them further. Then let's switch the blend mode here to overlay. All right, time for our final material layer. We're going to use a matte cap. Matte caps are the perfect way to add shine to an object and you can use the matte caps here in the spline library. Or upload your own if you'd prefer. I'm going to be using this darker matte cap here and changing the blend mode to screen. So as you can see, it adds this beautiful shine to our icon. And I encourage you with your blend mode set to either screen or overlay, try exploring the different matte caps in the spline library to see the different shiny effects that you can get. I still think this one's the best. All right, this is looking pretty good. I absolutely love this frosted glass look. The next thing we need to do is create those three dots across the front icon. And how we're going to do that is using cylinders. So let's go to the top toolbar and grab our cylinder. Let's decrease the length of our cylinder a little bit here and let's change the color to white. For lighting, let's change the blend mode to overlay and make sure the type is on Fong and we can change this to AB. But you know what? It's blending a little too much into our scene, so let's make some adjustments. I'm going to change the lighting to 90 and then let's change it to a more off-white color. Okay, that's looking a lot better. I'm going to decrease the size a little bit. Nice. Now let's use the color tool to make some duplicates of this cylinder and also use it so we have equal spacing between all three. So how we can do that is beside position, let's increase the value of the X axis to 95. And as you can see, they're spaced out nice and equally. Then just adjust it on the icon itself so it's nice and centered. Okay, looking good. And then let's just adjust the spacing. So I'm going to pull out the cylinders a little bit to add some depth between the cylinder and the first icon. And then let's match that distance between the first icon and the back icon. Okay, I'm really loving this. It looks super nice. I really love the glass look and how we can see that blue color appear through the front icon. Now let's try turning on ambient shadows to add a little more interest to our scene. Ambient shadows are great for more simple scenes. You can turn them on right here and you can change the color of the tint, which will change the color of the shadow. And as well, you can play around with the radius and the bias values. And you can really see the depth that the shadow is giving us between the two icons. It's a nice touch. Before we wrap up this tutorial, let's quickly make our icon interactive. So select the cylinder in the front icon and group them together. Then add a new state. In this state, let's scale up the size of our first icon and move it up a little bit. Now it kind of looks like it's growing or jumping. Then add a new event and choose the mouse hover event. Add a new transition and then go from the base state to the state. Then I'm going to change the transition type to spring. Let's hit preview mode. And now whenever we hover over the front icon, you can see that it grows in size. It's a nice little interactive touch. 
I want to encourage you to take your icons and your logos, explore adding a variety of textures and interactions to them. Because like Tunic did here, you can use your icons or your logos to create interactive experiences on your websites or even your app projects. If you want to learn more about making things interactive or how to code free embed 3D into your projects, check out the videos that I have listed in the description down below. And I also want to encourage you to join our Discord community. If you have any questions or if you want to share your work or get inspired, come chat with us on Discord. We'd love to hear from you. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.